Hey everyone, welcome to this video on the drag and drop interaction. In this video, we'll discuss the principal parts of the interaction and how to set them up. Learning this interaction will allow you to create simple games as well as interactive hero graphics. There are two main pieces in this interaction. The first is the draggable object. It contains a top level group with a detect hitbox that will tell our state machine whether or not we're actually clicking on the object, a tracking hitbox, which will align our object to our mouse cursor, and finally, a lower level group that contains all the artwork. The second part is the final location. This also consists of a top level group. We have a final destination hitbox, and this will tell our state machine whether we've dropped our object into the correct location, and a lower level group that contains all of the artwork. Now that we know how everything's set up in design mode, let's hop over to animate mode and configure it in the state machine. Now that we're in animate mode, let's look at how the draggable object's set up. The first thing we need to do is create some animations, a detecting animation and a tracking animation. These two animations only key the tracking hitbox. As I said before, this tracking hitbox is gonna allow us to actually center the draggable object onto our mouse cursor. So when we're just detecting or our state machine is waiting for us to click on the object, we want this tracking hitbox to have a scale of 0% in the X and 0% in the Y. When we've actually clicked on the object, we want the tracking animation to play, which will open up our tracking hitbox to 150% scale uh, on the X and the Y. With those two animations in place, we'll need an input. And that input is gonna be a Boolean and we'll call it is dragging. Now you can see I have both of those animations added to the graph with a two-way transition so that when is dragging is true, we're on the tracking animation. And when is dragging is false, we're on the detecting animation. To get everything working on the artboard, we need to add some listeners. In this case, we've got three of them. The first two detect listeners are targeting the detect hitbox, which is here. And these are to tell our state machine whether or not we're actually trying to drag the object. So you can see on the first one, when pointer is down or we're clicking on the object, our Boolean is set to true. And when our pointer is up, is dragging is set to false. Now, that's great. That can get us back and forth between detecting and tracking, but we need to actually be able to move the object around. And that's where this final listener comes into play. This one is um, looking at the tracking hitbox as the area which it's looking for the action. And the action that it's looking for is a pointer move action. Now, when the state machine detects that um, we have a mouse movement within the tracking area, we also want to align the top level group, this draggable object, to our mouse cursor. So now, when we play the state machine and click on our object, you can see that we go to the tracking animation. And when we actually move our mouse pointer, the main object aligns to the cursor. Now, that's great because we can drag and drop our object anywhere, but with this interaction, we want something to happen when our user drags the object into the correct location. In this, in this case, it's gonna be this black box. To give our draggable object a final location, we're first gonna to need to add some new animations. So in this case, I've got two animations called in location idle and in location. So in location idle only keys the scale of the artwork here because when we drag our object into the correct location, I wanna play an animation. And in this case, it's something very simple just to signify that you've correctly placed the object in the right spot. The other thing I've done is created a location key for our draggable object, and that's done by um, adding some position keys, the X and Y, to center it on that object so that when we drag it and place it within the final location hitbox, it will actually snap into the correct location. Once we have the animations, we need another input. And in this case, we're using another Boolean, and we've called it is correct. And that would work for maybe an education app or a puzzle, but you might um, have some sort of other interaction and you can call this is connected or is something else. I've also added a new layer to the state machine and both animations that I created, the in, idle loca uh, in location idle and in location animations are both in here um, and they're set up with a two-way transition so that when is true is correct, we're playing the in location looping animation. And when is correct is false, we're at the end location idle animation. 
The last thing we need to do is give away for our state machine to actually switch back and forth between these two animations. And we're going to use another listener for that. In this case, it's this object attached listener. So we're targeting our final destination hitbox, which you can find here in the final location group. We've got that here. So when we detect a pointer up interaction, we can set the is correct Boolean to true. And when that happens, we'll go from the in location idle animation to this in location looping animation. So we can start the state machine and you can see that when we click and drag the object over here and it's placed within that in location hitbox, the, it triggers this in location animation. Now we're almost done with this interaction, but we have one last problem to fix. And you'll notice if we play the state machine and simply click on the final location, our draggable object just snaps over there. And the reason for that is this final destination hitbox. Uh, you'll notice that we actually never set keys for this. So that means that this hitbox is always accessible um, to us. And what we want is to not be able to interact with that hitbox when our uh, draggable object is idle. And we only want this hitbox to be available when we're actually dragging that object. So we need to make some changes to our detecting and tracking animations. So if you remember, the detecting animation is actually uh, this draggable object in its idle state, or we're not dragging it. So in this animation, we want to set a 0% scale key on the X and Y for that final destination hitbox. And then this tracking animation is the animation that we're playing when we're actually moving the draggable object. So that's when we want to make sure that the final destination hitbox is um, available for uh, some sort of mouse interaction. So once we add those keys and we go back to the state machine, you'll notice that now we can click on that final destination, nothing happens. And when we actually click and drag our object over here, um, it works like we want it to. So if we add some color to that hitbox just really quickly, you'll see uh, how it's working with the state machine. So right now we don't see that red box, which is the hitbox. And as soon as we click on our object to move it, that hitbox is appearing. So that is how everything is working behind the scenes. And that's actually all you need to know to set up a drag and drop interaction. So here's an example of taking what we just learned and applying it to something slightly different. So I've added a little bit more functionality just to allow the screen to drop down from the top of the artboard, but everything else is the same. So we've got our drivable object. You can plug it in uh, or drop it onto a final location, which is this little uh, power outlet in the side of the screen. And that creates this, um, this animation here. Uh, or, or turns this animation on. Everything is set up the exact same way. So we've got our cable and it is set up with the tracking and detection hitbox. In this case, I'm using ellipses, not rectangles. And then we have our final location, which is the screen. Um, and it's got all the artwork groups that we need. And then that final location hitbox, which is the most important part. State machine set up the exact same way. We've got that is dragging and is connected uh, Boolean. Um, in the last one, it was called um, is correct. I just renamed it here. And then we've got the same listeners, those detection listeners, the tracking listener, and that final location listener so that we know that we're actually dropping the um, cable in the right spot. Um, there's a couple extra layers on the state machine, and that's just to control the other animations that I have going on. So I will include this file in the description of the video so that you can check it out. It's also got the um, example that we worked on here. So you can um, use both of these to uh, work on your drag and drop interactions with. So I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, let us know and we'll see you in the next one.